YouTube, hi, my name is Mark and this is Nixon Motorsports. This channel is all about motorsports, from racing to exotic cars and even simulators. So today's video, we're gonna be installing a brand new laser right height sensor on the race car, on this race car. So with that, let's get into it, come on. All right, so let me talk to you, you know, why am I putting a a new laser right height sensor on the race car. It has laser sensors, one in the front, two in the rear currently, and, and they've been there actually for, oh, I don't know, last couple years, I think, at this point. They work, um, they work well, um, and I had a video, what was it, a month or so back, that um, talked about laser right height sensors, talked about a couple different versions, models, pr products, that type of thing. I'm gonna be updating just the front sensor itself and the reason I'm going to be doing that is one just evaluating another product in fact a product that is built for motorsports um, and has a super high frequency sample rate that type of thing um, but it's simply a um, does it work better is it more precise um, is a higher sample rate um, going to provide any greater fidelity um, you know, and of course, it's a digital output, right? So it talks on the megabit CAN bus. Um, it does not um, s um, provide an analog output, which look, many sensors and race cars do that. Um, as you know, analog um, can have interference and noise that can change the, um, the analog signal itself, the voltage. Um, and so, you know, you could have some air rate um, just because it's analog. So, so with that, let me pan down here and show you what I'm talking about. Um, first of all, this is the, the QX4 series, the banner laser sensor that I've been using for quite a while. Now these, these they, look, they do a pretty decent job. Um, they are an analog output. This happens to be the five volt output unit itself. Um, they do a decent job. They're not industrial from a, uh, a, a casing, that type of thing. So if you had any, any um, um, amount of moisture, that type of thing, um, on these, you might have an issue. But um, you know, typically people will mount these inside um, their bodywork inside the race car. At least that's what I did. So I haven't had any issues, um, but I'm going to move from that to this. And this is a... Um, a laser sensor from Izzy Racing. And by the way, if you haven't used their products, they make um, extraordinarily good um, product in my opinion. So, so this is one of their new ones. I haven't installed it yet. Um, just quickly as I pan over here and look at some of the configuration or specs on this thing. Um, <laughs> this thing is configured, it samples at 800 hertz. Um, it talks on the one megabit CAN bus, right? And um, it has mil spec connectors on it. It has a couple bolt hole th holes here for mounting hardware, which you'll have to make. And um, it's pretty intense. Now, now look, it, it might be overkill for some applications. I'm gonna be putting this on the front of this race car. And if you've, um, noticed, and I, I've spoke about this before many times on the race car, I run this car extremely low. I try to get the front ride height down to the absolute um, ground as close as I can without just destroying the, uh, the under tray, you know, the floor, that type of thing. So knowing where my, um, my floor is um, with respect to the surface, the track, the, the road surface, is really important. And um, I'm hoping that this new sensor, this new laser sensor, will actually give me um, greater accuracy, fidelity, um, so I can actually see truly where the front of my race car is as it relates to the track surface, right? So that's why I'm doing it. So let me get the car up. Um, I need to get the shock cover off. I need to get the nose off so I can get access to the um, where I'm going to mount this up by the pedal assembly and um, I'll bring you back once I get a little closer to orientation and kind of a mounting discussion, okay? Okay, I have uh, the wire harness made here for the, uh, 
for the Izzy laser sensor. Um, and all I did here is I split this out um, uh, to DTM connectors. So I have a, um, a CAN bus I'm going to jump onto here, just a two pin. And then um, I have a plus 12 or, or power for this module. So I'm going to go ahead and um, before I mount it, I'm going to connect it into the, to the car. Um, I'm going to hook up the um, uh, or power on the electronics, get the CAN message, CAN bus configured. Before I mount it, I just want to make sure everything's working right. Okay, so let me turn to the computer here um, and show you show you what I'm doing. So this is uh, my uh, my uh, logger, actually. The, the C185 dash manager just happens to be what I use for my L180 logger. Um, I added the um, I added the CAN configuration in here. Let me scroll down. So I'm going to to channel four CAN bus four. And if you can see this where I'm moving my mouse, I have these four um, additions that were added here. Uh, so I imported this uh, DVC, and you get that from Izzy, so it's not a big deal. It configures your messages, messages for you. And these sensors are configured, um, as you can see, for left front, left right, um, you know, rear left, rear right, that type of thing. I only am putting one in the car. Um, as I as I've mentioned, but like the the left front example here, if I go to edit, and if you've seen this before, this is where you can um, you can configure or modify your hex messages. Um, you don't need to do any of this because uh, the DBC is correct. You just put it on the CAN bus that you want to use, and so on. Okay, so. I've done that. Now let me go to monitor channels. So I have everything running here. Um, let me scroll down. Let's see, where am I? Here we go. Um, so here you can see um, left front internal temp, left front raw right height, left front right height. And there's those three different values from this uh, sensor. So you see the temperature there, 25C. You see the raw data, and then you see the um, height calculation in millimeters. Um, so I actually, so I actually uh, moved the device up and down, make sure that it's actually working correctly. It is. Uh, so I think I'm good to go. I'm going to head. I'm, gonna, I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted in the car, and. What I'm actually doing, so I have down there on the, the floor itself, I have a small opening. Um, that's where I'll have the laser um, uh, mounted so it actually can see through that hole in the floor. And uh, that's about it. Button this thing up and, and uh, kind of go from there. So, so it looks like it's working great. Now I'm going to mount this thing. Um, I need to get the car on the scales here in a little bit. I'll be taking it on track tomorrow. Um, so I'll come back um, and give you an update on what I'm seeing uh, from data, how well um, it's actually working on track, okay? All right, so laser right height sensors, the Izzy uh, unit itself, actually it's working quite well. I thought I would show you a little bit of data on MoTeC, what I'm seeing. Um, overall, though, I'll say I'm, I'm pretty pleased with, with the sensor itself. It seems to be working well. So let me pan over here. And it's a busy display. I got a couple screens here. So I have a section uh, folder called Right Height, and I have a few worksheets that I'll, I'll show you here in a second. You know, on the far left, I'm showing my static right height. I got a couple different measure points that I use. That's all it is. But the top one is actually laser. The bottom two are physical measurement that we use with a device we have and so on. And this shows the actual right height uh, for the moment on track. So if I zoom out here, it's a busy screen. Um, this section, this channel is the front right height. So you can see it's a little busy. You can fil filter that out of touch, but um, you can see, I hope, that white line there. And if I go over here as an example, um, it actually is showing that it's um, it's hitting track surface, right? Which is the case, I am actually touching slightly um, around the track. Now this bottom one, just to explain that, the car does have a third spring in it. So this is showing um, the third spring um, as it narrows before it comes in contact with itself. 
Um, you can see here I still have a little bit of a gap. I could actually narrow that even further, which I will, um, to try to prevent um, the, the, uh, the floor hitting at certain parts of the track, okay? So that's this screen. If I, um, if I go over here on ride heights, this is another one that I use. Um, just another view, that's all it is. So here's the rear down at the bottom. These are different sensors. This is the front again with the Izzy sensor. And um, I have a, another channel here that shows me just while braking, um, what's the ride height of the car at that point, you know, when it wants to pivot and pitch forward, right? Um, so this is third spring, I'm not gonna get into that. Um, here's laser itself, so just raw laser data. And again, you can see I'm running a touch low. I'm gonna have to either add more spring to the car, raise the ride height, um, or um, adjust the third spring kind of in comparison, okay? Last one I'll show you. This is a track map, as you can see. Um, and, but it is actually using front ride height as a visual. So you can actually see um, when it changes different colors. Here, go down here. You can see when I'm going down a straightaway, it, it, gets, it gets closer and closer. You know, a little orange, orangey red, 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 right? It's, so it, it's bottoming here, it's touching the track. Um, and then, you know, blue, of course, is, is not. And it, ha it has a map here, a map here. You could change this, of course, um, and so on. But, but that gives you an idea, at least how I, I use the, uh, the Izzy laser sensor itself. Um, but that's it for this video. I hope you found this of interest. Um, the Izzy sensor is pretty cool. Look, we're not affiliated with these guys. We buy all the all, all their stuff, their parts um, directly. So we're a customer. Um, but I would say check it out if you have a need for um, a high quality laser sensor and they have other nice stuff. I would definitely check it out, okay? Um, hey, if you haven't subscribed, you got to hit that button, all right? Until next time, ciao.